On a separate news, about 45% of Malaysian companies have still not allocated a budget for sustainability initiatives despite the growing trend of sustainability demands by the country's stakeholders, according to Malaysia Businesses Sustainability Plus Report 2022. The report was launched by the UN Global Compact Network Malaysia and Brunei. And the report also showed that 33% of Malaysian companies claimed a lack of sustainable financing plans. For the more sustainable development goals, CDGs, adoption remains worrying with nearly half or 47% of the Malaysian private sector indicating no commitments to the SDGs, while 34% of businesses indicate that the SDGs are not relevant to their businesses. However, the report suggests that this may be due to the overemphasis on environmental, social and governance ESG as a common sustainability language for the businesses, thus uh, under-prioritizing the SDGs. Joining us this morning is Arina Kok, Malaysia Climate Change and Sustainability Services Leader Ernst and Young or EY Sandra Berhad. All right. Um, uh, in recent report, Malaysia Businesses Sustainability Pulse report this year by UN Global Compact Network Malaysia and Brunei, uh, there's about 45% uh, of Malaysian companies have still not allocated a budget for uh, sustainability initiatives. So what are some of the challenges for these companies uh, to allocate this budget? What do you think? Thank you. Um, very good morning to everyone. We do see that uh, one of the key challenges is really focused on the um, misalignment uh, in terms of what ESG looks like for the corporate level or company level as compared to what the global international standards are looking at. So the lack of understanding on the ESG uh, management is actually one of the key uh, challenges that companies are facing. Now, if we look at most uh, companies, they would have allocated budget for training, capability building, digitalization, um, as well as energy efficiency, energy savings. Now, all these are in fact ESG initiatives in a very uh, layman manner. So companies now need to, what they can do is really relook at their budget planning, their strategy, to see where their capital allocation uh, is very much focused on. And from there on, start to have the understanding of what are the environmental impact from their business expenditure or business plan moving forward. So with that context, it is not so much of allocating a budget for ESG initiatives, but really relooking from their corporate planning perspective where their financial spend is going to be, what are the outcomes to environment, social and governance when they are spending their money, whether it's on capital or whether it's operating expenditure. So I think that is one of the critical change of mindset um, that, that companies now need to take um, so that you know it, they, it's not seen as um, ESG, environmental, social and governance, is not seen as a silo but it is an integral part of the company's uh, business model and business resilience. All right, talking about the need of critical change of mindset. Now, how we, we do have to go back. What's the level of ESG awareness amongst Malaysian companies? And what are the challenges for public, even private sectors to even move the sustainability initiatives? So when it comes to the level of awareness, quite a number of uh, companies are very much uh, in the past have been familiar with the triple uh, bottom line terminology, the people, profit and planet. Quite a number are also very uh, familiar with the 3R, reuse, recycle uh, and repurpose um, direction. Now, all these are evolution of where ESG is coming from. And it's not uh, a, a new thing that, that we, we are seeing for businesses. The only evolution is looking at a longer term sustainability or longer term impact to um, the key stakeholders. So the challenge where we are seeing, the current landscape we are seeing is a number of companies are shifting from just uh, corporate social responsibility donations, uh, cleaning up beaches, uh, volunteerism, all those will still be a mainstay for the short immediate uh, impact of what, where businesses is uh, driving growth with community. Uh, 
But there is a clear shift, mindset shift that uh, ESG is becoming a more business sustainability consideration. What it means is, will the business still survive if consumers are changing their interests and behavior? For example, there has been uh, a roadmap to zero single-use plastics that the government has put out. Now, all these policies will result in transformation, business transformation on the way they have been using consuming plastics in their supply chain. Now, all these are going to be business strategy because it's disruptors and it affects the economics of the business model as well as there are consumers and stakeholders that the company are now being res held responsible to. So there is a clear shift of just from corporate social responsibility that are short and, and, and uh, short term to a broader uh, longer term business sustainability where they have to relook at whether their business will be viable in the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years moving forward. So in terms of the current landscape that we're seeing, the awareness of the importance of ESG is fast becoming um, very, very, uh, uh, very critical because we, are, we have seen Bank Negara, Bursa and Securities Commission have pushed for enhanced regulations around the ESG uh, focus areas. And all these have also resulted in the banks, asset managers, insurers are also looking at ESG screening in their day-to-day -day financing. So what it means is, you know, in today's days of age, companies that, that are seeking for loans, seeking for investors, they now need to have a very clear ESG uh, strategy, how these are affecting their business and how they are affecting community. And if this uh, clear articulation is not defined, businesses will face a challenge. But if it's clearly defined, measured, reported and communicated, businesses will find themselves in a better spot to actually navigate uh, and they are able to tap on uh, the benefits of brand customer loyalty. They are able to get better funding, tapping on green and sustainable finance. They are able to then be at the forefront uh, to engage and understand where consumers or stakeholders uh, are increasing on their demand. So there's a clear shift of whether you are in the very proactive uh, space or you are still reacting and looking at uh, ESG as from a compliance and regulatory re requirement. All right. Um, uh, thank you very much for the very uh, good insight. Uh, Irina Kolk, uh, the Malaysian Climate Change and Sustainability Service Leader, Ernst and Yang Sudiran Berhad, on the insights how uh, companies can implement ESG and what's the uh, impact on the future and how can we move forward with implement implementation of the sustainability and how it can make an uh, improvement on a better future. So I want to say thank you very much on this insight. Uh, Nyagawani will be taking a short break and we'll be right back.